Live from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partner. Welcome back. 12,000 here in attendance for KubeCon CloudNativeCon 2019 in San Diego. I am Stu Miniman. My co-host for this afternoon is John Troyer. And happy to welcome to the program, recently out of stealth, two gentlemen from Chronosphere. Uh, sitting to my right is Martin Mao, who is the co-founder and CEO, mm -hmm. and his co-founder, Rob Skillington, is also the CTO. Uh, we, we've stated on theCUBE, actually, you understand where this conference is, where <laughs> co-founder and CTO is like, you know, the most prominent title that we seem <laughs> to get on here, um, because that's the type of geeks we love on the program and in this community. So, uh, first of all, congratulations on the launch, and Thank you so thanks much. so much for joining us. No worries. All right. Um, Thank you. When, when I've got the founders on, I'm going to start with the why. Tell us mm -hmm. kind of the problem statement, where you were coming from, and what led to uh, the creation of Chronosphere. For sure, for sure. So with Chronosphere, we found a actual gap in the monitoring market, in a very crowded monitoring market. We found a gap, uh, and, and the gap exists when uh, companies with very large, complex technology stacks or large enterprises uh, move onto cloud native technology and Kubernetes. So with this migration, what we found was there's actually a lot more monitoring data being produced, because there's a lot more pieces now. We're moving from monolith microservices, we're moving from like physical machines to VMs to containers and pods, and that generates a lot more things that you need to monitor and track. And not only a lot more things, but you're generally monitoring the relationship between these things. So as the number of things increases, the number of relationships exponentially increases. Um, so yeah, that's the sort of problem we're solving, is like monitoring all of these things at large scale, and we couldn't find anything that could even store all of these things, so that's the sort of All right, so, so what, what is the background of the team that uh, you know, made you in the position uh, to, to work on this problem? Sure. Yeah, great question. I mean, uh, me and Martin go back uh, quite a, quite a few years. Uh, I officiated his wedding only uh, very very recently, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, we we basically worked together at several different companies. Uh, you know, I think both of us are entrepreneurial at heart. Uh, I'll let Martin talk a little bit more about the. Uh, the yeah, so, yeah, so like you know, a few years ago we started working at Uber, and at Uber we went through this migration to cloud native and Kubernetes, and through that migration, that's when we sort of had to solve the problem ourselves. Uh, and we solved the problem at Uber with an open source project called M3. Um, that's really where this whole thing started. Uh, and Chronosphere is sort of you know building on top of M3 now and providing a pro product on top of the open source uh, platform that we created. Hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the business? Uh, I noticed that uh, you know, there are many ways of approaching open source in 2019, you know, you sure. know open core, and, and, uh, but also as a service. So can you talk a little bit about how you've approached your business model? Yeah, for sure. So we're very much in the, in the position or in the camp of as a service, right? Because uh, you know, a lot of companies do do open core and they sort of go into the enterprise support model. We sort of didn't want to go down that route. Uh, and also with our open source product, it's not really an end-to-end -end, uh, solution in itself. Like you use M open source M3, but you still need to plug it together with other things yourself. So what we really wanted to do was to give customers an end-to-end -end solution uh, that was built on top of the great technology we built with M3, uh, but really it solves a problem sort of end-to-end, -end, and we do that best as a, uh, as a service. So. All right. Uh, Rob, maybe you can help explain M3 a little bit for us as to how that fits in, in the landscape, what it works with and the like. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah, it's uh, basically, at its heart, a metrics platform that is built on, at first, the, uh, the lower layer, M3DB, which is a distributed time series database. Um, and then on top of that, we have basically an aggregation platform that uh, is actually aggregating a lot of the samples and, and metrics that we're uh, collecting. So we can really do some transformations on the data as it comes in before it's stored in the database itself. And this lets us do a lot of uh, smart processing of what signals actually matter, what signals don't matter, uh, correlate, like storing them in a way that can be accessed uh, much faster than like typ other typical systems that don't really do any aggregation before it gets stored. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have, of course, like a, a query engine that works with this distributed set of data. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's really a database that was designed from day one to be a metric store. You know, it's not built on Cassandra, it doesn't use RocksDB. Um, at the lower layers, it literally every part of it uh, was built uh, for this purpose. 
Can, can you talk a little bit about uh, dimensionality and cardinality? Because as I look at the, this observability monitoring space, I see a lot of current discussion about that and, and frankly a little bit of fighting. <laughs> and I'm not always, I, I can kind of see, it, but I think uh, why it's important, but kind of what are the, some of the reasons and what do people do you know, by having, an, and, and what is it actually? Let's start yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you know, with this, this, this hot topic of like high cardinality, high dimensionality is uh, what I was talking about earlier where as you move into a cloud native world, right, you're now monitoring things at like a pod level. So it's like instead of tracking things on like a per host level, you know, tracking things on a per pod level now. And you're that just adds- more things per pod. More things per pod, and like every pod, you know, th these are ephemeral pods now, so they don't even live for very long. So you end up having more pieces of data and they're kept around for a shorter period of time. And now you need a system that can store all of these pieces of data because you want to see them uniquely. So you want to monitor each individual pod to see exactly what is run at the finest levels, right? So you actually need technology that can store a lot more data than you could before. Hmm. And, and uh, you know, adding to that, there's a lot more people running with like mobile applications uh, that use, you know, that are running in markets all around the world using different cell providers uh, and different uh, backend services. You may deploy your backend services multiple times a, a, a week or, or even a day. Uh, and if you want to tag, you know, the metadata on uh, and slice and dice by that metadata. Uh, with your business and with your applications and your system, that requires you know adding yet another dimension on your data, which adds to that cardinality. Every time you add a dimension, you know that just multiplies the cardinality of your your existing data set of monitoring data. And it quickly adds up a lot, right? So. All right. So Martin, uh, maybe uh, since you're just out of stealth, uh, give us some of the speeds and feeds. You know, product GA is it globally available? Uh, Series A funding. You know, yes. who's behind that? Yeah, uh, for sure. Some of those pieces. Yeah, so we just came to sell two weeks ago. Uh, we we closed our Series A a few months ago. Actually, it was led by Greylock. We raised 11 million dollars, and our partner at Greylock is Jerry, uh, and and we like him very much. Uh, and you know, yeah. whether hi Jerry, <laughs> Jerry Chan, good, good to <laughs> hear from you. <laughs> uh, and you know, the the state of the company, and the thing, we are currently in private beta right now. So with our hosted platform, we are onboarding customers into a private. Uh, uh, offering right now, uh, and early next year we'll sort of open that up to a more public beta. Yeah. And, and the way folks would use this, you'd be using Prometheus or, or Graphite or something, and you'd be so you'd be you'd have tracing, you have logs, you have other things, and you would be plugging all them into into the your service. Is that? Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah. So, so you mentioned two, two of the technologies. So, if you're using Prometheus or Graphite, like Lexi Graphite metrics, both of those can be pushed into the M3 system for sure. Uh, we actually just uh, announced a tracing integration this week at KubeCon. Actually, Rob gave a talk about that integration er earlier this week at KubeCon. Yes. Uh, we haven't moved into logs yet because the way we look at the problem is not from like a sort of a for providing a one-stop shop for all observability solutions. We actually look at it from a use case perspective, right? So the use case we're looking at is like real-time monitoring and remediation. So tracing is a part of that story. Uh, it's a cr critical part of that story now to add additional context uh, when you get alerted based on your metrics. But um, we haven't quite moved into to logging yet. So. Yeah, and we don't really want to solve uh, any of these problems without knowing it'll work at scale. You know, like the fundamental reason we even built the open source project in the first place was we were dealing with cardinality in the tens of billions of unique time series. And so, you know, as we don't want to just kind of like roll into any, into every single feature under the sun. We really want to solve it once correctly and be able to systematically roll that out to enterprises at scale. I, I, without, I mean, without talking too much about Uber and any Uber secrets, I mean, it seems like the game has changed with that kind of a scale of, of, of uh, you could not have done, you can't, can't run Uber if you're tracking all those cars, like literally without uh, some sort of a tracing like high cardinality sort of a system, right? Because you're literally tracking cars all over the world, people all over the world, routes all over the world. Exactly, exactly. Well, uniquely positioned, we, we had the, the requirements to solve it at such a scale, and that's why we had to build this technology to solve it for that unique situation, because you know, technologies ahead of time did not really have this use case to solve, so that's why we had to sort of, uh, we couldn't find anything out in the market to, to solve it at that scale, so that's why we sort of had to build our own uh, to, to uniquely solve it for this uh, use case, so. And yeah, and I, I would add to that that typically engineers, you know, at, at larger organizations uh, tend to want to organize everything very nicely and uh, split it up and, and really control how they're monitoring their data. Um, but we've noticed actually, you know, qu uh, definitely over the last few years, more and more people are open to uh, letting people just start collecting, you know, random data uh, that, that is uh, relevant to the systems that they're building as they're rolling it out, even as they're experimenting with it. Um, and, you know, systems today that are built from scratch uh, to deal with, to be as efficient as possible, 
with very unstructured data is uh, you know, becoming wildly popular because that's how developers want to develop software. You know, they don't want to have to like slice and dice it neatly and package it up and pass it on to others to run. They want to basically slice and dice however they want to and dynamically uh, as they scale up with that. I've, I've always enjoyed every SQL schema I've had to <laughs> <laughs> or change. Sure. Yeah. All right, uh, how have you found the show? How's the reception been? Uh, give us a little bit of the, the vibe of the show and how it's been going for you. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's been fantastic for us actually. So we just came in at Silt, so like, you know, the name is still quite new. Um, but yeah, we, we've had a bunch of folks at our booth the whole day. We've been giving a demo on the product, so a lot of companies are getting excited about it. I think we're solving it at a scale and that, that really resonates with, with um, you know, a lot of the people here at the show, we're still solving at a scale, but we're solving at a scale that's also uh, 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 in, in, in a cost efficient way as well. So that's r really been uh, received quite well so far. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rob, you, you gave some sessions. Uh, what, what kind of feedback are you getting from people? Uh, is, is the problem statement that we talked about at the beginning you know, resonating with people that you talk to? I mean, uh, I, I was really, uh, yeah, pleased to hear that after my session today that a lot of people came up to me and said, you know, they've never really seen metrics being linked to traces, uh, the way that we're doing it. In fact, that's the first time they've ever seen a demo that can do uh, uh, what, what we're kind of trying to upstream. Um, we're actually you know, upstreaming a lot of those changes in the open source uh, world as well at the same time. And so you know, we've, what we've found, especially uh, you know, in a lot of the, the companies today that are pushing uh, the, the uh, the everything forward with development wise and, and how they're running operations is that they're using a lot of features in open source and then those features are battle tested in open source. Um, generally it becomes you know, abstract to the point where it works for a very large amount of people but then when they need to scale it up that's when it becomes difficult. So no, I think that um, you know, a lot of people have, have been uh, very positive with basically us being able to also push forward the feature um, Back, up, open back upstream into the exactly. M3 project. Yeah, so, and yeah. also into Prometheus. So, uh, okay. you know, we I'm an open metrics um, contributor, and that's essentially uh, an exposition format that's built on the Prometheus exposition format. So it's going to become a standard way of exchanging metrics from one system to another. And that's going to com like basically commoditize and democratize uh, the exchange of metrics and make a lot more systems interoperable with, with each other which we fundamentally believe with as well, of course. We're developing open source, and we believe that these systems need to play nicely together so we can build, you know, have building blocks that large companies and organizations can all share and, and uh, build better things on top of. All right, so uh, looking to go to public beta early 2020 is yep. what we said. Uh, when we come back in 2020, uh, what are some of the kind of key cap key KPIs and metrics uh, th that you'll be looking at uh, to be successful in, in your first year out of Stealth? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question. So, you know, so some of the KPIs we're, we're looking at doing is coming out of public beta, making that available to a large range of companies, because right now we're sort of on, onboarding companies sort of uh, one or two at a time. So, yeah, uh, seeing how many companies uh, adopt the product, and also we're, at, again, adding more features uh, over time for that particular use case of like, you know, monitoring uh, your, your technology stack and your business in real time. So, it'll be a lot more features coming down the pipeline and a lot more customer adoption, hopefully, w along yeah. with that, so. And, and I would also say, you know, our hosted platform um, is really about offering like deep isolation between our tenants as well. Um, so basically when we, you know, as in the next few months come out, we, we want to make sure that um, it's it works basically like clockwork that and everyone can, we, we can roll out and scale that highly isolated platform for, you know, tens and hundreds of organizations and thousands eventually. Um, so, and doing that at scale is hard. So I think, um, yeah, we'll see how we're doing with yeah. that. For sure. Right. Rob, Martin, congratulations uh, on thank coming out of Stealth. Look forward to hearing more. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Right, thank you so much. Right. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. We'll be back getting towards the end of three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at KubeCon, Cloud Native Cloud. Thanks for watching theCUBE.